Hey guys, today I'm going to create a Raspberry Pi Rune endpoint using a new Raspberry Pi I just bought on eBay. So I will do an unboxing. I will build it on the camera. For the first time, I've never built a Raspberry Pi. So please take it easy on me in the comments when you see me noodle around with that. And then I'm going to install a operating system called Ropey. And that acts as a Rune endpoint as well as an AirPlay streamer and other things. So that's just a basic Raspberry Pi operating system, particularly designed for audio streaming. Okay, this is a short unboxing video of the Raspberry Pi 4 kit I ordered on eBay. Let's take a look at what's inside. Ah, don't even need a knife. All right, just a case. We've got a power adapter. I believe this is a five volt USB-C. We've got what looks like, oh, this is an SD card. It's got a little SD, mini SD card in there. It comes with an HDMI cable. Oh, this is like mini HDMI to regular HDMI adapter. So that'll come in handy. It comes with two of them. There's the Raspberry Pi 4, it's a Model B. That's the actual Pi itself. And this actually comes with an enclosure. It's cool to see that it actually looks a lot smaller than what I thought. This is gonna go on my, in my audio system, so it'll be very inconspicuous. All right, let's try to get this thing working. One more thing I forgot to mention, this, uh, this little guy came with the Raspberry Pi SD card and it says 2.0 reader, USB 2.0 reader. Not sure what this is. I don't know if it's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. I don't know if it's a dongle. Okay, so this is the Pi enclosure. Oh, looks like it comes with little feet and screws. Okay, it's got some uh, heat sinks. Small, medium, and large heat sink. Got a mini fan with some screws, and it looks like it's got the pins for the, the fan to attach to the header. Black, red, and blue. Let's take out the Raspberry Pi itself. This is the Model B Raspberry Pi 4. It's got two USB. Looks like it's USB 2, and then these are USB 3 because they're blue, that's how I could tell. Ethernet. It's got the two mini HDMI ports and then the USB-C power port. Audio jack. So the case comes with a little how-to manual. It's made of ABS material. So it's like you put the Raspberry Pi right in the case and literally put the fan on top of it. Attach the pins to the header. Looks like the second pin is red. The third pin is ground. And the fourth pin is TXD, whatever that is. And it comes with a little screwdriver. Wonder which way is up. I would assume that the fan blades are protected, so it would probably go down like that. Maybe we attach the pins first and then put, put it in the case. So let's see. Red, black, blue from the second pin onward. So red, black, and blue. I would assume that's proper. So the ports are facing this way. Oh, it comes off. So the bottom half comes off. So let's put that pie in there and let's put the cover on it like so. I think we can attach the fan somehow, mount it. Okay, so the fan gets mounted on top of the case. Oh no, this is the bottom of the top and it, you screw the fan to that and then you literally put it in like that, like this. That makes sense. I'm gonna put the big fan side down. I think that makes most sense to me. I could be wrong. I know when you're doing CPU fans, you wanna do opposite corners. It's always good to have another small Phillips head around. Let's make sure it's tight. Okay, now we could put the top on, I think. We're ready for that. I think the top just kind of goes on like that. I don't know if it screws on, if it just sits there. I think it just clicks together. It's not like super, you don't want to drop this off a uh, shelf or anything. Oh, I didn't put the heat sinks on. Okay, I forgot the heat sinks. Let's take the top off. It's all four heat sinks. Let's put the fan back on and the case cover. Snap in there, it just kind of goes in smoothly. Okay, I think that's in there. And that's what we have here. This is like the SD card port. These are the USB and Ethernet ports. I think the next thing to do, I might just power this thing on and see if the fan starts spinning. And then I will hook it all up and see if I can install Raspberry Pi OS on here. Okay, I had these, these two lights here, they lit up um, over here against the wall when I plugged it in. But the fan wasn't spinning, so I don't think it was actually powered on. So let me, let me look up how to power on a Raspberry Pi. There's a little manual it comes with. All right, here's a little Raspberry Pi starter kit that I forgot to mention came in the box. And it doesn't say anything about a power button 
besides just plugging it in to get it to, to start. Let me double check the uh, fan header connections here. Okay, well what I'm gonna do, um, everything works, the lights come on, it's just the fan doesn't spin. I'm gonna assume that the pins are generic on here and that the operating system might tell the fan to spin. So I'm gonna hope for that. Um, since I don't think there's any like BIOS or anything on here, I don't know. I've never done a Raspberry Pi, so let's just try to get the operating system installed on here and see if the fan starts spinning at that point. All right, guys, so I got set up at my desk here. I have the Raspberry Pi ready to go right here, and I am going to take the SD card that it comes with. It's a micro SD card, and I just so happen to have a micro SD card reader, which is good news. I think that's something that you're going to need. I don't think it comes with one in the kit. I looked and I didn't see it. So good news is for photography, I use this SD card reader. I'm going to put this in there and I'm going to also go to a browser and try to download the best OS for this Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to do a search and say Raspberry Pi OS for Rune Bridge because that's basically what I'm trying to build this for. And I'll say Raspberry Pi 4. This is what I had an idea of that we're gonna use is the Ropi E. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Okay, so this is it. I'm gonna use the Ropi E, whatever this is. Okay, so this is easy, use, easy to use Raspberry Pi image for network audio streaming solutions. So let's see, I'm gonna to try to download the latest. So I'm gonna say download the latest image here. Okay, so I'm gonna go and download for the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's do, I don't know, uncompressed, I have a fast internet. All right, and that looks like it's gonna take, it looks like it's going a little slow. Let's try to take Belena Etcher. Okay, let's go flash from file. And I'm gonna try to choose the uncompressed file. Let's go select target. And I'm gonna choose the 64 gigabyte micro SD that it came with here, the generic mass storage media select. And let's try to flash this. Okay, that took about two or three minutes. Um, it said the disk is not readable, which is probably okay. Assuming everything went well, uh, let's put this SD card into the SD card slot, micro SD card into the micro SD card slot of the Raspberry Pi. Let's connect the HDMI cable and see if we can get something to show up on the screen. All right, good news. I connected the HDMI cord directly to a uh, screen rather than going through my Elgato 4KS, which was apparently not working. I was able to see the Linux text scroll through in doing the installation for about 10 to 15 minutes. It rebooted many times and then the screen went dark. So I did a little research and I realized that you can go right to the Raspberry Pi from a browser. So I'm on my Mac here and here we go. R-O-P-I-E-E-E, -E -E, three E's, dot local. And it brings you right to the Raspberry Pi configuration interface on the web. So. As long as you have an ethernet connection, this should be good. So let's go and I'm gonna to try to configure most of this. I have it on my desk right now, so it's not attached to my DAC over in my stereo system, but I will do the best I can. So I'm gonna give it a device name. I'm gonna call this Raspberry Pi uh, Streamer, and I'll call it, I'll give it my time zone, America, New York. Okay, match the requested format. I guess maybe we don't want spaces, so I'll just, call it, I'll just call it Raspberry Pi, one word. Okay, I'm gonna click okay here. So audio, I can't quite configure that yet. I'm gonna do that after I connect it to my DAC. So let's go to the next step, network. I'm gonna use ethernet. So I'm just gonna use DHCP, that's fine. I don't know what the remote control zone is about, so I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave advanced alone. And then let's see what these different settings are. UPnP bridge, I don't need that yet. I don't need DLNA. The only thing I really need maybe is Plexamp and Rune. Hopefully Rune is already gonna be working on here. We'll see. But anyway, information and devices. Okay, so let's go and click configure to, and this will probably reboot the device. Okay, configure just configure the device, but now I gotta reboot. Do you wanna reboot? All right, I'm gonna click refresh here because I saw the screen go black. While we're waiting for this, one thing I noticed, the fan is still not working. Uh, that's kind of concerning to me. I'm on the fence about the fan because I would think maybe that would introduce some audio noise to the Raspberry Pi, but then again, I don't want it overheating. So 
I may do a little research on the fan and see why I can't get that thing to, to spin up. Oh, okay. So actually when I changed the name of the device, that changed the DNS name as well. So I, all I had to do after a minute or so of rebooting was go to raspberrypi.local. That's what I called my device. So that makes sense. Let me see if I could find anything about a fan under advanced. So the board temperature is 45 Celsius. That doesn't seem too bad. Okay, since the temperature is pretty stable, I'm not too concerned about this fan not spinning. Um, that may be something I could do in a separate project. So if I can determine that I need a fan, you know, uh, under heavy loads, maybe I do need a fan. I will make another video about that. However, I'm not too concerned about this temperature and I'm pretty sure streaming rune is not going to be a heavy workload. I'm not going to be gaming on this thing right now or anything crazy like that. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the Raspberry Pi, bring it over to my stereo system, connect the USB to the DAC and see if I can configure that audio device as a rune endpoint. So I connected the Raspberry Pi to the Bifrost one multi-bit DAC that I have and I plugged it in and connected the ethernet cable over there by my home stereo. So now it looks like it's booting, which may take a minute. Okay, this is booted up. That's good news. I'm able to reach it over the network from my stereo. So let's go over to audio and audio hat. Now I don't know what audio hat is, but let's see here. I'm gonna just leave that alone. I don't know. Oh, here we go. It automatically selected audio USB by Frost Gen 5. That's excellent. That's the device I want to use. So I'm already set with that. So let's go into Rune. Now it says select audio zone and I have to configure audio zone. So let's see if I could find my Rune endpoint with the Raspberry Pi. Here it is, Raspberry Pi by Frost Gen 5. Let's enable that. And I'm gonna call this by Frost Gen 5, sure. Okay, so now let's select audio zone and I'm going to play something. Okay, it looks like it's working. I don't want to play copywritten music, but I'm going to go have a listen. Next up, I'm going to do a sound comparison between my original setup, which was a ThinkPad laptop that I had just as a streamer using uh, Linux Debian. And I was just running Rune Bridge on this laptop. And so let's, let's just compare that to the Raspberry Pi and do an audio comparison. I know YouTube has compression and it's really hard to hear things over YouTube, but I'm going to do the best I can. Anyway, I'm going to use a mono microphone. Unfortunately, I don't have a stereo microphone, but I'm going to do that and see if we could hear any differences.
Hey guys, so I told you I'd give you a little commentary on what I think of the sound. Um, you know, what, what, what you don't hear is, uh, you know, the, the stuff that I'm hearing in the room. There's, there's a lot of YouTube compression going on from, from your guys' side, and it's probably very hard to hear things. But what I hear is uh, much more instrument separation. I feel like the instruments are just more alive, and that makes the music much more pleasant to listen to. The volume is the same, more or less, but... The, like, the attack of the drums and the guitars and the vocals just sort of come out of the music a lot more for me. And I just, I find it altogether more enjoyable listening experience. I don't feel like it's uh, as muffled or bland as it was coming out of the laptop. Uh, that's so far my impressions in the first night of listening to music. I'm sure over time I'll have other things to say about it. But for now, that's my opinion. And I hope that translated to you over YouTube. But for now, I hope this video helps you in some way. If you can, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more audio technology content.